I now get to bring in CBS News Election and Surveys Director Anthony Salvanto. Anthony, we have questions for you. Obviously, five days later, it feels like a uh, kind of a Groundhog's Day, except every day we get incremental <laughs> results. But now Pennsylvania yeah. has put Biden over the top for the 270. We have called Nevada. Uh, there are still a couple more states, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina. Tell us the very latest. Uh, and, and then I'm going to have a couple of follow-up questions for you, as you can imagine. You got it. Well, it's nice to talk to you, Alana. And you might remember, it feels like a million years ago, but all fall we kept talking about how election day could turn into election week. And sure enough, right. it did. So we've been here at the decision desk since Tuesday night watching vote after vote come in. And yes, so Pennsylvania has come in and has put Joe Biden over the top, also Nevada, then adding to his electoral count to get to 279 over the 270 that he needed. But look, the breakdown of what's gone on over these last few days has been us watching the reports from county after county and state after state as elections officials tallied those ballots. And we've known all along that because this year voting in a pandemic, some people voting by mail, and then many people, including many Republicans, voting on election day, that there would be a lot of ballots to count. And clearly they took their time, they were getting it right, and we were just waiting for those reports. We take those reports, we put them in to our uh, models, and then at a, at a certain point, it just came down to sort of basic math. How many ballots are remaining? Mm -hmm. How far behind is the trailing candidate? And then you make the uh, you make the projection, Lana. Uh, and I know that there that there were a lot of people who were anxious to have uh, some call made, whether it was uh, for Trump or for Biden, just to <laughs> just to have the release of of knowing. Um, but but even as we now uh, have been able to project that uh, that Biden has won the presidency, there are still several states that that are counting ballots, and that process is continuing. Can you go ahead and take us through Georgia, North Carolina, and Arizona? Uh, I'm wondering what's the latest on the ground there, and what when do we expect to see results uh, that are definitive from those states? Well, let's start with Georgia, where you see Joe Biden has the narrowest of leads, 2,461,000 to 2,454,000, 49.4 to 49.3. So we're down to the decimal point there. Now we hear that'll go to a recount, so we'll see what happens there. But Having said that, the counting is done, and the story here was that Joe Biden, as we suspected he'd have to, were he to be competitive in the state, did well in the Atlanta metro region, got strong support there. That's critical for Democrats. The president getting strong election day vote, and that's important. That was important for him. So that's where Georgia is at the moment. And then I'll take you up to North Carolina. Here we have the reverse situation. We have the president out in front and what's been counted, but North Carolina will start reporting more uh, next week. So we're going to have to wait for that uh, to see where that goes. And then Arizona, here has been an interesting case where Joe Biden has, it's been leaning towards him, but as reports are coming in, the gap is getting a little bit, a little bit more narrow. What we do here, Lana, is we look at the number of outstanding ballots and what percent of those outstanding ballots does the trailing candidate need to catch up. Right now in our computations, that number is 58% for President Trump, meaning he'd need 58% of what's remaining to catch up. Now, one question there is how many ballots are remaining? We're always looking to find that out as we get reports. Ultimately, the question will be, can he make this number? It's higher than his current statewide average, so that, in some respects, might not, you know, you might think, well, he's got to outperform his, his statewide average to do that. It remains possible. And the question will just be how many ballots are left to, uh, to report to see if Joe Biden can hang on. And what we've been getting mostly, most of that is out of Clark, uh, is out of a Maricopa County, sorry, Maricopa, which is Phoenix. So that's the big county that most folks are watching there, Lana.
And Anthony, uh, you have gotten very little sleep. You have been at this board um, uh, <laughs> for several weeks now, but, uh, but particularly in the last couple of days. Uh, and for our, our viewers, Anthony is uh, is the guy, together with his team, who makes these decisions, um, who looks at the data, who analyzes where we're getting votes and where we're still waiting for votes. Can you take us a little bit more inside this process? Because I think, given how different this election has been with the number of early votes, votes, mail-in votes and absentee votes, uh, and how close it has been, and in several states, uh, perhaps surprising as they've moved uh, from red to blue. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you make those decisions and uh, and what happened the moment that you decided Pennsylvania is, in fact, going to uh, be something that you could project for Joe Biden? Sure, sure. Well, taking those in order, uh, yes, I've gotten some some very kind people on Twitter saying, boy, you look like you need sleep. Are you doing okay? Look at those bags <laughs> under your eyes. Um, I, I'm happy so to report kind. to everyone. I'm, they are, it's very nice. Um, I, I can happily report to everyone. We are doing okay. Look, a big picture here is that um, so many millions of Americans, a record number of Americans, went out and voted in this election. And it's really... You know, a very, uh, it's really very important, of course, to report then back to them what it is that they've done. And so uh, it's an honor to be able to do that and, and also a thrill for us political junkies. So that's, that's what's really important here. As far as how you make a projection, well, on election night, we're combining data. We're looking at votes from the counties. We're looking at, in some cases, the exit polls. And we're talking about trend lines, which way elections are headed. Now, some of those in states that the count isn't as narrow are more straightforward to tell people what's happened. In some cases where a uh, count is very, very close, like it's been in, say, for example, Pennsylvania, then what you're doing is going through this process of saying, and in some states, in this case, it's really straightforward math, it's how many ballots are left to count and what is the size of the lead, and is it possible for the trailing candidate to catch up? One of the things that we've seen in a case, to use the Pennsylvania example, is that as the votes were coming in from heavily Democratic areas like Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, Joe Biden was adding and adding to his margins, and then that, therefore, makes it, uh, makes it an insurmountable lead. And once you compute that the candidate has uh, an, an insurmountable lead, then you can go ahead and uh, and make the projection. So that's what we're doing. The essence of it is really we are reporting what the voters have done, and we are reporting on what the elections officials and folks at the county offices are telling us their counts are. That's a that's an important point, Anthony, because as much as you are uh, absolutely crucial to our CBS News team, you are not the kingmaker. You don't decide who is president of the United States, uh, despite some conspiracies that you can hear online about uh, about the media trying to decide who's president of the United States. All you're doing is reporting in the facts about how America has voted. Uh, so on that point, Anthony, uh, this morning. Take me into that the the moment that you knew you were going to be able to say this is the math Pennsylvania is going to go for Joe Biden and and starting off this morning did you think we were going to have a decision uh, so early? Well, in this case, it really was about the size of the margins, and so what we got this morning was and this is what happens at the desk is sometimes in in a case like this we're waiting for more reports out of counties in Pennsylvania and I wasn't sure we weren't sure if we if and when we were going to get more reports we knew that those elections officials were there counting ballots and then we heard that they would have some reporting to do adding on uh, to the totals that they had reported and when we got those reports and looked at them that was those in fact turned out to even add even more to Joe Biden's overall statewide vote margin. And so that's where it kind of pushed that, that, uh, that gap even higher. And then that's where, that's what happened. And it was really um, very fast in the sense that once you, you got those reports and those margins went even higher, you could, uh, you could tell that now we, uh, we had the, the, what had happened. 
Uh, I feel so cruel to continue asking you questions when I feel like I should just be offering you a warm beverage and letting you sit down, but <laughs> I'm gonna ask one more, Anthony. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm too curious. I can't, I really can't help myself. In addition to looking at the votes, you also have looked at the exit poll result and, you've, and you um, are the person who really oversees all of that. I'm wondering, as my last question, if you can tell us some of the themes that came out of this election and what it tells us about American voters right now. Yeah, well, there uh, certainly remains a great deal of division in America. That much, I think, the exit polls made clear. People who saw very different problems facing the country, or at least uh, different, uh, looking for different approaches to, to the problems facing the country. We certainly saw that the coronavirus pandemic played a large role. In particular, we knew from Democrats, and we knew that from the pre-election polling going in, uh, that it was important to their vote, uh, that they felt that Joe Biden would do a better job of handling it. Uh, meanwhile, the president's supporters we knew uh, strongly focused on economics, strongly focused on the economy. Uh, so we, we saw a lot of that. We saw Joe Biden make enough gains, uh, certainly among independents, that was crucial, certainly among some of the voter groups that uh, we knew were supporting him, uh, or college degree holding voters especially, but also then making margins into uh, white non-college uh, degree holding voters. And that was something that was important uh, in shifting some of the states uh, right. and shifting some of the states up along the uh, the upper Midwest as well back into the Democratic column after the president, of course, had won them last time. So those are some of the, the broader themes uh, that are out there. But I also think this map then, too, depending on the way it goes, tells something of a story there with, uh, again, the Democrats performing better in the West and along the East Coast, and then the president, you know, holding on to Texas, which, you know, uh, some had suggested, we had suggested that might be close. Florida doing better uh, through the Midwest and, and some of the South pending what happens in uh, Georgia and North Carolina. Uh, were there, so th these are important themes. I'm just wondering real quick, were there any surprises for you though? Well, every election night brings, brings some surprises. I think we'll have to go back through <laughs> all the data and, uh, and see right. just, uh, yeah, and review it all. All right, Anthony Salvanto, thank you. Thank you.